Hi, welcome to my studio in New England. My name is Dee Dee. Today's class was created for those who have hearing loss and wear hearing aids. Now, hearing loss can be acquired after someone is born, and it could be from an illness or an injury or even just from aging. And some people are born with hearing loss or even deafness. And there's about 34 million people in the United States with hearing loss, so that's one out of 10. Some of the symptoms that happen with hearing loss, imbalances, and sometimes dizziness, and even fluctuation with hearing. So some days that you have better hearing, and some days not so much. One of the things that I know myself is that I get frustrated because there is sort of this feeling that there's a stigma associated with hearing loss. You know, how do I perceive myself? How do other people view me? You know, I have this big hearing aid in my ear and, you know, do they think I'm still as smart and all these things. So there's a lot of things to do with hearing. One of them is learning how to accept your hearing as it is and accept yourself the way you are. And one way to help you accept that is to do yoga and to meditate and learn that you are a great person. So myself, I lost my hearing when I was about two years old and I lost it from enlarged vestibular aqueduct, EVA. Now there's different, different illnesses that can cause hearing loss like meningitis and some people even get meniers and that causes fluctuation with hearing. So this is the reason that I created this class is because I know the frustrations of going to a yoga class or even watching yoga on the um, internet, on YouTube. So I want to share some of those therapies and tools that we can do today and our practice to help us relieve the stress and figure out ways, creative ways to be able to better hear and visually see yoga. So we want to educate ourselves and there's a website called Hearing Loss Association of America. It has a lot of information about hearing loss. If you go on the internet and you want to learn about the deaf community, go into Gallaudet University. There's a lot of information there as well. We want to think about our general health as usual. We want to think about how we're sleeping, how we're eating, are we exercising regularly, are we socializing, and of course, have your hobbies. Always great to have hobbies at home. Okay, so let's get down to the uh, therapies and tools. You don't want to wear your hearing aids. Well, that's great. I don't, I, at home, I don't want to wear my hearing aids. But, you know, if I'm going to decide to do that, I'm going to make sure that I have closed captioning on the video. And a lot of the videos do have closed captioning. Um, and some DDs don't, so it's kind of frustrating. So just find a different one that has closed captioning. But if you're going to wear your hearing aids, there's a couple of things that we want to consider. So if you wear the behind the ear hearing aids, there is the tendency for them to flip off the ear and kind of dangle. And if you have wires like me, then that's kind of risky because if they snap, then I have to send it out. So I just wear a headband over my hearing aids, so that just keeps them in place. So, but if you have little tubes, maybe you want to go back to your audiologist and talk to her or him about maybe shortening it so it's a little tighter or that type of thing. If you're going to do a yoga class or any kind of a vigorous or cardio workout where you're going to sweat, then we want to protect the hearing aid apparatus itself. And you can either put a headband in, on your head that's closest to your head and it's between the head and the hearing aid so it keeps the sweat off the hearing aid. There are little ear gears that you can go on Amazon and look for and it slips right over the back of the hearing aid right over it. It's kind of cool actually. I don't have any. I'm too cheap. Now if you have a streamer like I do, I have one right here, and this streamer basically goes around my neck and it allows me to listen to any device that has Bluetooth on it. So I can turn this on, turn my Bluetooth on my iPad like here, and I'll be able to hear the speaker directly into my hearing aid. Now when it comes to the streamer itself, kind of dangles. Um, so when I'm in a downward facing dog, if I'm leaning forward, it can be in my face and it can swing and whack me pretty hard. I've tried to come up with ideas to try to keep that from happening. And I'm a female, so I wear a sports bra. I just take this long, thin sock. I know it's not very attractive, 
but I slip it in that and let it go all the way down. And then I just tuck it right inside my bra, right underneath the band so that it doesn't really go anywhere. So it may be find some kind of solution for yourself, whether it's a, a smaller sock or, and men can also wear tighter shirts. I mean, they're not gonna get the whack of the streamer in the face. So that's a consideration for men. Um, so give that a try. I'm sure you don't wanna wear a bra or a sports bra. Well, maybe you do. <laughs> so I'll talk a little bit more about the stream in a, in a few minutes to how you can connect it to your iPad to work. I like to give people visuals as far as that goes. Uh, if you're going to consider going to a live class, a live yoga class in your community, I would suggest that you call ahead of time and ask them if they play music during class because it's going to make it very difficult to hear. If you do go to those classes and you hear the instructor say, close your eyes, and that's wonderful and it's great, but I advise you not to so that you can always see what the instructor is doing and what she's saying because we need to read lips and we have to kind of have a, a visual to our, our, our yoga practice. It's very important for people with hearing loss. And then if you do go to the live class and you see your instructor, see if you can have a conversation with her first or him first, a uh, man out there that teach us. Go and have a conversation with him or her and just kind of give them a heads up, you know, I have a hearing loss. I mean, you don't have to make a big deal out of it, but you do want to let them know so that they can maybe make sure that you're practicing safely. I also like to go in the middle of the room. If you go in the back, that kind of keeps you away, that puts you in a distance that so makes it harder to hear. But if you go in the front, then you're putting your head up a lot. But if you're in the middle of the room, then you can kind of watch other people, see the instructor, and you're a little bit closer for hearing her or him. Now, I've been to a lot of live classes in the community and across the states, and I always look for instructors that are sort of animated. They kind of point to where I need to go, and they're very, you know, loud with their hands. It's just, that's what I look for. So you need to kind of find out what works for you, what kind of chemistry you're looking for for an instructor. Does it need to be somebody that speaks very clearly and loud, or is it somebody that's really animated, or is it it's just that you need to go online and have your personal private instructor. But as long as they have closed captioning on their videos, that's really important. And besides closed captioning, if you do know sign language, American Sign Language, or just a little bit of it, you can also go and look for, there is a couple websites here, deafyoga.org, there's deafhoodyoga.com, and yoga pa. So the chocolate that's associated with the head and the ears and the base of the brain as well as the pituitary gland is the sixth chakra. Six. Sixth chakra. And it is the color of indigo and it is at the third eye. So it's right about the Right at the forehead between the eyebrows, it's right about there. The elements are wisdom and insight, and the imbalance is this hearing loss, as well as daydreaming a lot. So it's, it's like you're not trying to focus, you're just trying to kind of go in your head in, because you can't hear, so you, you can get very tired hearing. So sometimes it's, very, it's just better to daydream. I do it a lot. The aromatherapy, if you're into aromatherapy, is clary sage. Clary sage is what I have in my aromatherapy machine, and it's a nice smell, and it helps to open up that chakra. Okay, so make sure you have your captioning on. We're going to go ahead and slip our streamer into this pocket. And the way to make sure that you have it connected to your hearing aids, make sure your T-coat is on your streamer is on, and your iPad, you wanna make sure that the Bluetooth is on. And when you start the video, you should be able to hear me directly in your hearing aid, so it's gonna be like surround sound. I'll give you a quick clip of our visual now. Today we're gonna to learn about hearing aid streaming to a tablet. If you don't have a tablet, you can also do this on a computer, an iPhone or an Android. For today, we're gonna to do it on an iPad installing the iPad on top of a table and look on YouTube and look for a sequence that you want to watch. And then you want to enable closed captioning and the iPad should have the Bluetooth activated. And then for yourself, you want to put on your hearing aid, turn on the T-coil and then put your streamer around your neck and you should be able to hear me like surround sound. Enjoy. 
So go ahead and put your headband over your ears and so they don't fall out and cover your streamer and we'll see you down at the mat. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started in our practice. The first thing we're gonna do is to center ourselves and we wanna bring our hands to heart center in prayer just for a moment to set an intention. You don't need to close your eyes here. You can for a moment, if you can hear me, then that's great. You can close your eyes and set your intention. Setting an intention with an affirmation or a phrase or a mantra that makes it feel good to you, it means something to you. And slowly open your eyes if you have them closed. But we're going to go ahead and bring our thumbs right to our forehead. And looking down at the floor, I have a slight gaze in your eyes. So softening the eyelids, soften the face. And you're bringing awareness to the sixth chakra at your forehead. So call the third eye. Focusing on the pressure of your thumbs on your forehead. Put a little bit of weight on your head on your thumbs. Soften the jaw. Just bring a little extra awareness to your third eye. Balancing out your chakra. And then slowly release your hands down. Very nice. We're going to take our left ear to our left shoulder and stretch the right side of the neck nice and easy. I tend to close my eyes a lot, but I'm teaching, so it's okay. If I were in a class, I would have my eyes open. And then roll your chin down to your chest, right ear to right shoulder. Allowing your head to be nice and heavy as you stretch the left side of your neck. Again, bring it chin to chest and over to the other side, left ear, left shoulder. Take the right hand off to the right side, hover it over the floor, and you'll feel a deeper stretch right from the shoulder all the way up to the base of your skull. Bring your hand back, chin to chest, right ear, right shoulder, and then take the left hand off to the side, hover over the floor, and you'll feel the stretch all the way from the shoulder, all the way up the neck to the base of your skull. Bring in the hand back, chin to chest, and then bring in your head back, looking up, flexing the neck. Come back down, come back, back. And to center and just look over your left shoulder. And coming back to center and look over your right shoulder. Moving nice and slow and gracefully. Coming back to center. You can make some circles in one direction. Small circles first, just to test out your neck. You don't want to be cranking in your neck. If you feel any pain, just stop. And then go in the opposite direction. Coming back to center. Taking your hands, interlace your fingers, palms out. And then you're going to bring your arms up overhead, paste the palms on the back of your head. And then take your head and press on your palms. And this releases the muscles in the front of your neck. We're counteracting this. Come back to center. Take the back of your hand, place it on your forehead. Push on your forehead against your hands to relax in the neck muscles in the back. 
back to center and release. Take your right hand, press on your right side of your head, not on your temple, maybe take your hand instead. Push it against your head, but take, do it with resistance, or push it against your hand. This allows the side of the neck to relax. Relax that left shoulder. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the other side. Press against the hand with your head and relax the right side of the neck and the shoulder. Come back to center. Roll the shoulders back and roll the shoulders forward. Take your arms out to a T and then rotate your hands down towards the floor to the palms go behind, it goes backwards. And then come up and try to bring your palms back, rotating in the shoulders. We'll do that a few times. Just warming it up so we can stretch it out a little bit more. And then arms out to a T. Palms up so your thumbs hitchhiking backwards. Push them as far back as you can. You'll feel it ringing out, kind of like ringing out in your shoulder. And then bring the thumbs to go up to the ceiling and then bring them down towards the floor as far as you can. And you can see that your shoulders will start to rotate in and then go back and forward. Back. And the last time forward. And then make a little circles going backwards, just little ones, nothing big. And then come forward, making little circles coming forward. Keep your jaw soft and then relax and just let your shoulders roll down. And then we're going to take the right arm out, cross your body and make your right arm a board. And then take your left hand, the left forearm and press it on that outer right arm. Push the arm in. You're going to feel a little stretch in the outside of the right shoulder. Keep the right arm like a board. Come back to center and do the other side. The so left arm is straight out. Take the other arm underneath against the forearm. Keep the left arm like a board and then cross your body. You can go as far as you need. Go far as you need. And then release and shake out. Okay, we're going to come right up onto our hands and knees going to cat-cow. And making sure that your wrists are directly underneath your shoulders and your knees are directly underneath your hips. And then drop your belly, look forward, squeeze your shoulder blades for cow. Exhale, round it up, chin to chest. Let your head be heavy here though. Stretch the back of the neck. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the tailbone. And exhale, round it up. We do a few more on your own. Inhaling nice and deeply. And exhaling nice and deeply. And come back to hands and knees. And walk your hands forward a little bit. And we're just going to tuck our toes and lift our knees up walk our feet up and we're going to come up into a rag doll. So separate your feet hips width apart. You can use your legs to help you come up to standing a little bit. And then you want to bend your knees deeply and then relax your arms over your legs as you allow your entire body to relax. Even your head. So lift the weight of your head. Pull on your neck. And shake out your head. And maybe you want to start to straighten your legs just a little bit. Squeeze the belly into your spine. Shake out the head. And then arms out to a T. And come up with a flat back. And extend your arms up overhead. Exhale, release down. 
So we're gonna, and now we're going to do half sun salutation. Inhale, stand up. Exhale, hinge and fold. Shake out your head. Fingertips onto your shins and create a flat back so you almost look like an upside down L. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. And exhale, fold over your legs. You can always bend your knees if you feel really tight in your hamstrings. Arms out to a T. Come up with a flat back and extend your arms up overhead. Exhale, release down. So we're going to do sun salutation. So we're honoring the sun. I'm going to come to the front of the mat. And I'm going to put my band on. Because now that I'm going to go upside down, my hearing aid may fall off. So I want to be cautious and not break it. It's a lot of money. Okay, so bringing your arms up. You'll extend over your legs. Fold over your legs. Shake out your head. Fingertips onto your shins. Create that flat back, lengthen the tailbone down. Exhale, bend your knee, place your hands down. Step your right foot back, step your left foot back. In. Stay focused right in the center of your mat so you can keep your neck nice and long. Exhale, lower your knees. Now you wanna shift forward, bend into your elbows, keep them close to your body as you lower your chest down. Untuck your toes, roll the shoulders up, and come up for a baby cobra. Exhale, release. Tuck your toes and come up to table. And now we'll make our way into our first downward dog. Keeping your knees bent and lengthen your tailbone. Ears align in line with your upper arms. We don't want to round into our back. We want to try to keep it as nice and long as we can. Squeeze the belly into your spine. Bend your knees, walk your feet up, either little steps or you can step all the way to the front of the mat, nice and easy. Inhale to your flat back. Keep your neck nice and long. Exhale, hinge and fold and shake out the head. Arms out to a T, come up to the flat back and extend your arms overhead. Exhale, release down. Then come to the front of the mat, bend into your knees, and then lengthen the tailbone down. And then bring your arms out in front of you. And see how far you can squeeze yourself into a nice chair pose. So squeeze everything into center. And then lift your right foot, balance on your left foot. And then slowly kick the right foot back and go right into a warrior two. Heel the arch alignment. So imagine that I'm drawing a line right down the middle of my mat. Bend into your front knee and be sure the knee stays over the ankle. Relax the shoulders. Inhale, extend your arms up and straighten your front leg. Exhale, back to warrior two. One more time. Inhale, extend your arms up and straighten your front leg. Exhale, back to warrior two. And then slowly start to bring your arms down to the mat. And then we're gonna come back into a plank pose. Any way you can. Nice strong pose. Lower your knees, shift forward and lower onto your belly. Keeping your elbows close to your body. Untuck your toes, bring the hands back a little bit. Pull the shoulders up as you come up for a baby cobra. Keep your neck nice and long. And exhale, release. Tuck your toes. Let's go into a child's pose. So just put your big toes together, knees apart. Sit back into your child's pose and rest for a moment. And your third eye is going to be touching the floor. So dump any negative thoughts in the floor. Come up back into hands and knees. Walk your hands forward. Tuck your toes, we're back into a downward dog. Inhale, and then exhale, step your feet up to the front of the mat. Inhale to a flat back, squeeze the shoulder blades. Exhale, fold over your legs and shake out your head. 
arms out to a T, come on up, back into chair pose. Squeeze everything together, right into the center, lengthen the tailbone down, and then lift your left foot slowly, balance on the right foot, and then slowly kick the left foot back into warrior two. Heel to arch alignment, straight line down, knee is over the ankle. Arms are up to a T, relax the shoulders down, but keep your arms nice and straight. Inhale, straighten the front leg as you extend both arms up overhead. Exhale, back to warrior two. One more time. Inhale, extend everything up. And exhale, back to warrior two. And then slowly bring your hands down to the mat. And then try to step back to your war, reflect your plank pose. <laughs> and then lower your knees. And go right into a child's pose. We're going to come on up. We're going to come forward. Tuck our toes. Come high on your fingers. Lift yourself up and then just separate your feet so the hips width apart. I'm going to come sideways so you can see me. A little bit wider than hips width apart. And you want your feet to go out a little bit, especially if this is your first time doing squat. If you need a block, grab one now so that you can sit right on it. Otherwise, you can sink into your hips, bring your hands to heart center, Malasana. You can gaze down at the floor, so opening up your hips a little bit. And then slowly bring your hands behind you, so set yourself back down. I'm going to go into plow pose. Arms out to their side, you roll down onto your back. Flatten your shoulder blades down on the floor. And then slowly start to bring your knees back into your chest. And then start to extend your legs overhead. Maybe this is as far as you can go. You can flatten your hands down to the floor. Try to squeeze your shoulder blades down to the floor. Maybe this is as far as you can go, but if you can go further, every exhale, maybe you can bring your toes down closer to the floor. You do not need to touch the floor. Exhaling, maybe go a little further. Inhale, right up and exhale, maybe a little further. Let me go as far as it feels good on your spine. Slowly bringing yourself down, rolling onto your back. Bend your knees as you come down, very slowly. Uh, and then hug your knees into your chest. And just rock from side to side a little bit, feeling a nice massage on your back. Bring your feet back down, arms up to a T, drop both knees off to the right for a little twist. Back to center, and both knees off to the opposite side, opposite side. <laughs> for the twist and to balance everything out. Opening up your side body. Coming back to center. Extend your legs out. Separate your feet. That feels okay. Separating your feet, just letting them flop off to the side. Palms up to the ceiling so that you can open up your chest. You may be flatten the shoulder blades down. Take some long, deep breaths here and enjoy your Shavasana.
wiggle your toes and your fingers. Start to reawaken your body. Bringing your knees in, right arm overhead, roll onto your right side. Use your right arm as a pillow. Relax the left arm out in front of you. And then use your left arm to help you come up to a seated position. Sukhasana. And sitting up nice and tall. You could sit on a block or a blanket, anything that brings your hip in level with your knees or closer to that. Relax the shoulders down. You can gaze down at the floor. Bring in your hands to heart center and to prayer. It is here that you want to set your intention out to the universe. You can bow to yourself to seal your practice. Namaste.